our world has changed let's be clear but our world is also not changed let's also be very clear about this the fact is donald trump the newly elected united states president is definitely working very hard to derail all action against climate change but it's also a fact that climate change is real the threat is urgent and we need to do much more to be able to move towards the clean energy transition the question is what do countries like india do we need development and we need to make sure that we can actually double our energy between now and 2030 let's also understand the fact that we have dire energy poverty in countries like india and vast parts of africa where poor women even today have to have no option but to use biomass to cook their food the chula smoke the cook stoves that they use adds to their health burden and the challenge therefore is how does a country like india which needs to double its energy between now and 2030 do this at the same time make sure that the energy is clean because of the fact that dirty energy hits our health hits the health of the planet and we could make sure that it is affordable and accessible that's really the challenge in this the indian government plan for clean energy is actually really right on spot the indian government has said that it cannot replace coal today coal provides more than 70% of the total electricity generated in the country so getting rid of coal is not that easy but what we can do is to displace coal and this means by 2030 as energy consumption has doubled the share of coal comes down to close to 50 and the share of clean energy goes up to roughly about 45% that's the plan and that makes sure that we can then meet the needs of large numbers of people and also make sure that we can move towards a clean energy revolution So if you look at the numbers over the last uh, some years you can see that there is clear government intent and commitment to make this work the increase of installed capacity which is the amount of renewables new renewables and i'm defining new renewables as solar and wind and biomass and leaving out for the moment hydroelectricity which is non fossil but i'm not including it in the calculation of new renewables so if you look at it new renewable capacity has gone up from 40 gigawatts to 145 gigawatts by the end of 23 24 and now in fact in this year has further increased if you add on to this hydel power then 45% of the total installed power capacity in india is clean we have roughly 441 gigawatts already installed and so you could well argue that india is on track to meeting its 500 gigawatt target by 2030 but that said what is also very clear that there are still questions or many questions that need to be discussed so that the obstacles are removed and that we continue on this journey firstly let's understand that the installed capacity has definitely increased but in terms of total generation these new renewables still provide about 13% of the total electricity consumed in the country and if you take the plan that i talked about then the share of the new renewables has to go up to close to about 32% by 2030 not in terms of just installed capacity but in terms of the total 
uh, electricity generation. Now this is compounded by the fact that there is a lack of data in terms of the total amount of um, solar power projects that have been commissioned, uh, wind projects that have been commissioned, where they are located, uh, how much uh, was the capacity and how much power are they generating and at what price are they selling it. We also have to understand that when I, when I talk about solar and the total amount of solar that has been installed, a proportion of this is decentralized solar. So roughly about 80 gigawatts of solar power was installed by the end of the last financial and about 90 gigawatts by now, of which about 10 to 14 gigawatts is from rooftop solar or decentralized solar. This is a fantastic story. But the fact is, there is not enough data. In fact, there is no data on the power that is generated by the plants that are installed in individual rooftops. Now, as a result of it, it is difficult to track how much clean energy is actually being generated. There are also some headwinds that are very clearly there, uh, particularly against wind and solar new projects. The data from the Solar Energy Corporation of India shows us that roughly 34.5 gigawatts of renewable energy, which is solar projects, wind projects and hybrid projects, have not been commissioned. This is even after power purchase agreements have been signed. That agreement is only signed after the project has been agreed upon and we know that that project has land and at what price that power will be generated. So it is very unclear why these projects have not been commissioned and this needs to be understood further. In addition, Roughly 10 gigawatts or if not more of these projects are held up, stranded because of lack of power purchase agreements. And this is strange because let's recognize the fact this is a time when it is cheaper to supply power from a solar energy project than setting up a new coal based power plant. One of the arguments is that these, this is intermittent power, that it only comes when the sun is shining and the wind is blowing, and so we need round-the-clock projects. But even those projects that have been agreed upon are in the list of projects which are either not been commissioned or they are projects that are stranded because of lack of PPA. And this really requires us to reframe the agenda as we move on. First, we need to understand why are solar energy, wind energy, hybrid projects getting delayed or derailed? What further can be done to make sure that there are incentives or that the frameworks are set up so that these projects can get off the ground? Today, we have the opportunity to dismantle the old windmills and to reinstall newer windmills at much higher capacity. We then have to understand what more can be done with decentralized energy sources. Already the government has some incredible programs. The PM Surya Ghar is about rooftop solar. Uh, PM Kusum is about providing incentives to farmers to make sure that they can pump groundwater using solar energy. But the bottom line is that I really believe that the clean energy transition is within reach. The fact is we need to keep on track, we need to keep the focus and we need to keep learning so that we can make sure the clean energy revolution, not just the transition, but the transformation happens and happens fast.